Hey, good morning, guys. We gotta call this meeting to order, otherwise we can go and talk story the whole morning and the whole service throughout the whole service time. But we have to excuse you without worshiping the Lord through the teaching and the receiving of the word. But praise the Lord! What a great time of worship and good psalm, great psalm. And the psalms are great. Uh, good to spend some time in the psalms, always, guys. Uh, we're gonna continue in our study through the book of Peter. But I know we had a couple of announcements. Guys, River of Life Mission, this Tuesday, two days from now, the 21st, is our time to serve at the river. Uh, let us know if you're able to come out. I, I think that we cannot have too many people, but we can have a, 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 a set or a smaller amount of people because, uh, again, that's just how it is at this particular time. We are uh, serving, I think, takeout only. If you can go down early and help out, it's a great time. Otherwise, we're meeting there, I guess, about 6 o'clock as usual and uh, again it's all take out through the window so we need help uh, uh, serving up the plates making up the plates and then uh, cleaning up and so on and so forth so it's always a blessing and always a blessing to the folks uh, who come for a good hot meal help wanted guys we can always use help with the cleaning here at the chapel I know that um, when things got interrupted with this uh, coronavirus pandemic our regular cleaning opportunities on Thursdays kind of cease, so we're looking for some uh, alternates, and uh, if you can come out, you, you can see Hank or Levon uh, with, uh, with that information. But we're going to continue through the uh, study of the, uh, in Peter, actually. You know, I noticed in the bulletin it says that we're in First Peter. We quite, haven't quite gotten there yet, and we're working our way up there, and we still hanging around in the book of Acts. And uh, we're gonna just bring it up to speed as we uh, do a little bit of review from the Gospel of Matthew and uh, John, I believe. But why don't we pray? Father God, we do wanna thank you for this morning, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that we are here to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord God. And we thank you that you've gathered, gathered us here this morning, here in the chapel, here in the sanctuary, Lord, that we might just engage one another in the fellowship of believers and in the love of Jesus Christ. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's great that we can get the, the bows and the knuckle bumps and the, the elbows. And, you know, I don't, uh, 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 don't get us wrong, Lord, but we just can greet one another in the love of Christ. And we, we give and send that same greeting for those out watching via the internet, Lord, uh, to those uh, at home still sheltered in place, Lord God. And we, uh, Pray, Father God, that you might pour out richly into their gathering as uh, you do ours. But, Lord, we've got to confess that in the general assembly of the saints, Lord, there's even a greater outpouring of your spirit and a moving and a ministering that only you can uh, make, Lord, as a bunch of believers gather. And we burn brightly for you, Lord. And uh, we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity. We have to gather, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that uh, you might be uh, with those, Lord, uh, uh, going through the, uh, <laughs> the effects of the coronavirus, Lord. Uh, we know that there are some uh, uh, being hospitalized, Lord, some going through it uh, uh, as caregivers and first responders, Lord. And we pray, Lord God, uh, even for those uh, uh, within the care facilities, Lord, undergoing uh, this time of infection and the battle that goes on, Lord. But, you know, it's not only for the old folks or the very aged and those with the underlying circumstances, but we know of those that are quite vigorous and healthy and strong in their own right, Lord, uh, going through this uh, battle with this uh, particular COVID disease, Lord. So we, uh, we don't take it lightly, but in all things, we want to take it to you and commit it to you, Lord, and commit our lives this morning afresh to you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to gather, Father, to worship you, Lord, and we thank you for the, um, the opportunity we have to worship you through the receivings of, of the tithes and the offerings, Father, and we do thank you, Lord, for the, uh, your faithfulness in and through the body of Christ, Lord, as uh, uh, the gifts and the offerings and the tithes come in uh, so faithfully, Lord, uh, on, uh, by your account, Lord, and we thank you again. Bless now, we pray, 
all those worshipers, Lord, and we thank you for the many prayers, Lord, that we can pray for one another and the many prayers being prayed for us. We thank you ahead of time for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord, amen and amen. Guys, as an introduction to the letter of Peter, we've, uh, we've taken a short look at the life of Peter uh, this last few weeks. And and uh, 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 early on, we saw in Matthew's gospel, guys, the, the, the Lord called Peter and his brother Andrew, and he said to follow them, and I will make you fishers of men. I know we've been through this uh, 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 a few times in Matthew 4, but he said, said to them, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. And we're told that immediately they left their nets to follow him. And I, I thought of a, a few words that were descriptive of the life of Peter and the disciples and the apostles of Jesus Christ. And one word that jumped out at me was the word follow. And you know, uh, uh, for us, he's called us to follow him also. And uh, I'm glad that we're here following him and seeking him first this morning and we're following after him and following after his precepts that he's laid out for us in the word of God. Then in Matthew 16, guys, the Lord asked his disciples, uh, who do the people say that the son of man is? And, you know, uh, uh, people were all over the place. Who is this guy, Jesus? You know, is he, he's a good teacher and he's a man of God and, you know, he's a good guy. He's done a lot of good works. But, you know, he, they ask in Matthew 16, uh, who do the people say that the Son of Man is? To which Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Uh, to, which, uh, to which Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father that is in heaven. He says that in verse 17 of chapter 16 of Matthew. But here we see Peter's declaration of his faith in Christ. And God had revealed to him Jesus Christ the Savior, Jesus Christ the Messiah. And now Peter declaring, uh, 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 you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he declared that. And in, in his mind, he declared this clear declaration of faith. In Matthew 26, when Peter was questioned by those in the courtyard of the priests, we're told in verse 74 that he began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man, he said, de denying Jesus. And immediately a cock crowed. And here it is. Peter, just a few uh, moments before, had said, hey, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison for you. I'm ready not only for prison, I'm ready for death and whatever the consequences are on your behalf, I will never deny you. And yet the, the Lord had warned them. He says, Peter, Satan has demanded uh, to sift you like weed. In other words, hey, I'm gonna put you, the enemy's gonna come and put you through the mill. And, and, you know, at times we feel that, man, I'm going through the mill and, you know, how's your week? And I just said, oh, I've been put through a grinder, a blender, and I came out all beat up on the other side. And that's what we feel like, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, at times we're like Peter. We fail miserably. You know, he, the, the F in this portion of the scripture says, hey, I got an F in math. <laughs> I don't want to go to school. But, you know, it, 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 it became a thing that Peter was crushed in his failure. You know, the Lord looked at him. Uh, he wept bitterly as their eyes locked together. And, uh, and, and, and Peter said, man, I failed the Lord. And, and at times we feel that we failed the Lord. At times we feel that we've backslidden. At times we feel that our lives maybe have denied the validity of Jesus Christ and his Godhood uh, in our own lives. And you know, we, we go off miserably like Peter going off and weeping bitterly and uh, we know the failure at times and we know uh, the weakness of the flesh and I can only say that you know God knows that we're but made of dust and at times we we just know that hey we came from the dirt of the ground and <coughs> God breathed life into us and at times uh, living in these earthly bodies these earthly tents uh, that failure comes. But fast forward to Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. And uh, uh, when the day of Pentecost had come and they were together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues of fire 
distributing themselves as they rested each one of them on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and, be, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now we find Peter and the other disciples, the other apostles, the other disciples along with um, the hundred, about 120 uh, on that upper room on the day of Pentecost. Now they were filled with the Holy Spirit as, as the Lord had promised. He says, tarry in Jerusalem until you receive power on high. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And a sound of a violent rushing wind was accompanied by the Spirit resting upon the believers like tongues of fire. Uh, the Spirit giving them utterance or speaking in tongues as a witness to all in Jerusalem celebrating the Holy Day of Pentecost. Now we find Peter from follow to faith, then to failure, now filled uh, with the Holy Spirit. You see, the Lord told him, hey, Peter, uh, after, you, af after you've gone through this, return and minister to your brothers return and strengthen your brothers and now peter again filled with the holy spirit of god uh, renewed and restored and strengthened uh, by the outpouring of the spirit it's the holy spirit that jesus spoke of in acts 1 5 you will be baptized with the holy spirit you will receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you in acts chapter 1. guys you know as as uh as we pray, you know, throughout the day, uh, as we pray in the morning, getting started in the morning, it's good to just say, hey, Lord, pour out a fresh outpouring of your spirit into our hearts and lives. Pour out richly unto our loved ones. Pour out richly into our, our neighbors, our co-workers, our church family. Pour out your work as the spirit ministers, as the spirit fills uh, uh, with power, as the spirit comes upon you, as the spirit, uh, you know, when you think about the spirit coming upon us like fire, it's like fire burns away the hay, wood, and stubble, a lot of the junk that's in our lives. A lot of the things that we grew up with, a lot of the things that have been fostered into our minds or foster upon us. And, uh, you know, God wants to do a work of cleansing. God wants to do a work of just burning away all the junk, all the opala, and uh, 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 that we might be filled with His Spirit, that we might be able to follow, that we might be filled with the faith. And even in uh, uh, messing up and failing at times, uh, uh, the Spirit picks us up and takes us on. Uh, from, the, from this day forth, the world would never be the same, guys. Men and women and children, little boys and girls, filled with the Spirit of God. Uh, the, uh, the world uh, convicted of their sin. The Spirit leading and guiding the church, giving wisdom, reminding us of the words of Jesus Christ. You know, those are the ministries, of, some of the ministry of the Spirit. He says, I will, he will bring remembrance of all that I've said to you. And Jesus is saying, hey, don't be, don't be sad that I'm going. Uh, I'm going to wait, go to the Father. But he says, I'm going to send you the helper, the Spirit. He's going to lead you. He's going to guide you. He's going to convict the world of their sins. He's going to come alongside and strengthen you. And above all, he's going to give you remembrance of all that I've said. And, you know, as, as we think of the little boys and girls and men and women being filled with the Spirit, I can only think back of uh, Pastor Rich from Calvary Chapel, Fuchu, where he says that a lot of the kids, because they were using the Bible as a primary reader and a teacher in their, in their uh, school of English, a lot of the kids were taking the good news of Jesus Christ home to their parents. And the little kids filled with the Spirit, excitedly telling their moms and their dads about Jesus Christ. And that many of the moms were saved because, uh, because of the witness and the testimony of the children. You know, I think of the zealousness of some of the worship leaders and worship team and stuff like that. And uh, uh, Rich had a young uh, Japanese national, but he says that, oh, she used to go out to the train station, which is right close to their church, and she would play, pray, uh, uh, she would sing songs of praise and worship when the trains came in. And she would be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ that all who would listen and that she would invite people to church. And he said, hey, the people are coming too, you know. 
and and people were waiting for that good news people were waiting that the holy spirit would touch them and like the prophet said we're going to see in a little bit further in acts chapter 2 he says i pour out my spirit upon all mankind and god desires that all would be saved and you know god is working he's doing his part and you, we see the church and we see the young kids uh, in fuchu and their worship leader hey they're doing their thing and they're being faithful and god is doing a work within the hearts of people and you know it's it's uh, it's really up to uh, to the people because like you and i we all have to come to that point of saying hey yeah i want to give jesus a chance and you know you might begrudgingly come you might come like nicodemus many of us under the cover of darkness nobody knowing hey god you for real or what <laughs> hey god you for real if so, man, come inside of me because I need something. I need more than what I got. Because, you know, it just, the life as it is is just not happening. It's just not happening. And maybe those crazy Christians are right. Maybe uh, there's something to do about this one called Jesus Christ. But again, on uh, uh, one Christian songwriter by the name of uh, Jeremy Camp wrote the music and the lyrics of a song entitled Empty Me. We used to sing this song a lot before, but it goes, Holy fire, burn away my desire for anything uh, that is not of you and less of me. He's saying, hey, Lord, I need more of you and less of me. Holy fire, burn away my desire for anything that is not of you and is of me. In other words, hey, take my desire, burn it away, but I want your desire for my life. I want more of you and less of me with you, with you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, holy fire, burn away my desire for anything that is not of you and is of me. I want more of you and less of me. Empty me, empty me, yeah. Fill me. We, uh, uh, Will you fill me? You know, and you know, I, I won't you fill me? And I, I looked at this song. I said, he doesn't say that much, but the little he does say says a whole much, a whole bunch. Like Lord, uh, my burn away all those things, all my own desires, all my own things of, of relationships, of money, of jobs, of houses, whatever it might be, of of of. Uh, a covetousness, whatever it might be, my desire for anything that is not of you, burn these things away. My desire for anything that is not of you and is of me. In other words, Lord, I don't want my will be done, but I really want your will to be done in my life. And he's praying, Lord, burn those things away. Fill me, won't you fill me? Empty me, empty me of the, the things of myself. Fill me with the things and the desire, your heart's desire for my life. And you know, uh, it's a hard thing because we come to the Lord and some of us came kicking and screaming and yeah, we, we, uh, we prayed the sinner's prayer and yeah, we sitting here in church, but there are things that still hang on to us. We have our own desires. We have our own hopes. And a lot of th times uh, we say, we think that, oh Lord, your will be done, not my will. But really we, we kind of think, oh, I still like to have my will be done. And you know, my things accomplished and oh, I still like that bigger house on the hill, whatever it might be. For some of us, it's just like, oh Lord, I just need a roof over my head. That's all we need at this particular point. And you know, we, 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 we can kind of come here and I can say these things and I can say that, hey, I'm preaching to the choir because you know, uh, uh, I, I look at us and I think that we bless because we have the Lord and that he, it's, it's like he's all we really need and somehow things work out to his glory and somehow things work out and uh, I just don't know. I cannot explain it. I'm not one guy that says, hey, be, if you are a Christian, you're going to be help, blessed with health and wealth and all this stuff and so on and so forth like some guys proclaim. But it seems that that adage that as we seek him first, his kingdom and his righteousness, all things shall be added unto us. Don't worry about tomorrow because each day has enough trouble of its own. In other words, Lord, I got to come to you. I got to commit this day to you. Lord, I'm taking it one step at a time time, increment by increment, step by step. I cannot look uh, 
uh, into the next two weeks or the next month. Uh, Lord, if uh, uh, James says that, uh, you know, I, well, we're going to go into the city and we're going to do such and such a business and we're going to make all this profit, but James stops himself and he says that, hey, if the Lord wills, you know, it, it done, it, it'll be done. Whatever God wills, uh, God makes that way. And uh, don't count the chickens. Uh, the word presumptuous is a word that the, the psalmist used in the New American Standard Bible. And presumption uh, is not a good word if you look up the, the, uh, the Hebrew word, uh, but it really speaks about uh, uh, through presumption comes strife, you know, I want to say. And, you know, presumption says that hey, it's not a good thing uh, we presume on things or but even worse, we presume on what the Lord's will is and what he wants to do. Like the tongues of fire resting upon those being filled, guys, the spirit is burning away the desires not of the Lord. God is at work within us. He's begun a good work. He'll continue that work until Christ Jesus. Our part is that we faithfully follow along. Like Peter did uh, as the Lord called him and his his fellow fishermen, he said, follow me. And immediately they followed him. And they didn't say that, oh, I was on again, off again. I was on again, off again. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. Oh, the, the fishing is good this time of the year, Lord. I got to go back to the boats. No. But they followed him. They immediately followed him. And in this, they were filled with faith as uh, they... They spent time with the Lord. They, they, they said that, hey, you're the son of the living God. You're the Christ. You're the Messiah. You're the savior of the world. And they were filled with faith. And even in their, their uh, out and out failures at time, God was still faithful to pour out uh, with the filling of the Holy Spirit that we would have this extraordinary power, this wisdom and the comfort and the, uh, he's the one that comes alongside. He's the parakletos. He's the one, really, he comes alongside. Para is that word that says alongside. Kletos is that helper. And he's that one, the one that comes alongside to lean on us. You know why? Sometimes we just want to collapse, don't you think? That we got to lean on somebody. And he's the one we can lean on because in of ourselves, we surely fail. In of, in of ourselves, we surely can't... Uh, uh, have the strength, the, the, the world, the flesh, the devil, all working in concert to just beat us down. The, the, the devil, like, like Peter, demanding to put us through the grinder. And, you know, at times, again, we feel like we go through the grinder. At times, we feel that, man, I just don't know. I just don't know the, what the future holds because things are so uncertain. How are we going to do it? But he's, you know, he says, hey, empty me and fill me with more of the Lord. Won't you fill me? He says, won't you, would, won't you fill me? Our prayer is that, uh, that we should be that there's more of you and less of me. No matter what, Lord, you're there for me. For those who have witnessed this might, mighty outpouring of the Spirit and heard the disciples speaking of the mighty deeds of God in their own language, Peter would address, he says in verses 14 uh, through 16 in chapter 2 of Acts, but Peter, taking his stand with the eleven, raised his voice and declared to them, men of Judea and all you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words. These men are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only the third hour of the day or 9 a.m. in the morning. But this is what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. Uh, Peter clears the way to share what has taken place. And in 17 to 21, he quotes the prophet. He says, it shall be in the last days, the Lord God says, that I will pour my spirit forth, uh, pour forth my spirit on all mankind. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And even on my bond slaves, both men and women, I will pour out uh, those days pour out forth my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will grant wonders in the skies above and signs on the earth uh, uh, and blood and fire and vapor of uh, smoke the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood and before the great and glorious day of the Lord shall come it shall be that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved and the Lord uh, the, as the Lord promised the spirit uh, was poured out upon all mankind. And you recall the desire that the Lord has uh, that none would perish, 
but for all to come to eternal life in Christ. That's the entirety of the gospel, guys, and really that none would perish, but all come to eternal life. I love it where the Lord gave that first promise to Abram. He says that through, through your seed, through your progeny, through your family, all the, the nations of the world would be blessed. And he was speaking of the coming of Jesus Christ who would be in his lineage and how all the nations of the world are blessed because of him. Uh, 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 just, uh, just 50 days prior, guys, at the crucifixion of Jesus, uh, where that darkness fell over the whole land. And we're told that in John 23, 44, the sky being obscured and the darkness fell over the whole land. Matthew telling us in uh, 27, chapter 27, uh, uh, the, the earth shook and uh, rocks were split and the veil of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. Tombs were opened and the saints were raised from the dead. You know, from the very time of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, God has been witnessing to us the signs of the, the answering of his prophetic word, the darkness that fell upon the earth, the, the, the signs and wonders like the earth shaking and quaking. And we know that uh, in the past couple of years, we've had several of what they call blood moons. And I know that there are certain segments of the Christian community that really got excited over that, and they really thought uh, uh, something was really happening, and it really was happening. And you know, God was again, I think, uh, in His own way, witnessing and waking us up and calling us that, hey, uh, my word is the yea and the amen, and you know, I'm going to speak it, and it's going to come forth. And uh, uh, there is a day that blood and fire and vapor and smoke, and we've already seen the sun darken and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord. I think he's telling us, hey, wake up, guys. I, I think he's telling us with this pandemic, this COVID thing going on, uh, uh, it's, a, it's an awakening for a great segment of the population. It's an awakening for a great many people where we can say, hey, uh, this is what's coming down. This is a precursor of what uh, the, the times of tribulation will be. And a lot of times people, they're not believers, but they know uh, these things. They know 666. They know the word tribulation. They know uh, the word rapture. And these little words, and they have these little things and these little thoughts formulated in their mind. And it, deep within the heart and mind of uh, people is that emptiness within the heart. And deep within that heart, there's a question that says, I wonder if what these Christians say are so. And uh, again, we can only say, hey, Lord, as you, you said that you pour forth your spirit on all mankind, we can only depend on your spirit, uh, bringing these people to a place of saying, hey, I wonder if what uh, this uh, Christians say are true. I wonder if the cross of Jesus, which is such a stumbling block and such an offense, is certain and true. And again, we look for the opportunity. We look for the window of opportunity. And we can hope and we can pray and we can say when God says, hey, why don't you say a word? You know, why don't you say that, hey, God has, uh, God has saved you. Uh, uh, he spared your life that he, you might come to know Jesus Christ. So God has brought you this far that uh, you might receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The earth shook, uh, the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. And I always loved that because I always picture this, that God reached down from heaven and he took a hold of that, that veil, which was, you know, which was just so hellaciously big and large and so thick that uh, it, it was impossible for one man to manipulate that temple veil. And it took many men to just manipulate the veil. But God reached down from heaven and he took that veil from top to bottom and he tore it asunder. And only God could, uh, could accomplish something like that. We see uh, many notable um, miracles as the prophetic word fulfilled. But the greatest passage in this particular section of scripture is in verse 21. And it shall be that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Guys, you know, our job is not to, to have the guys say a prayer or to mark our, mark our notch, our Bible, our Bible or whatever it might be. I, I led another one to the Lord or I got this or I did that. But it's really to say, hey, 
All you got to do is call upon the name of the Lord. Those that confess Jesus, those that come. And I think that many guys, they because they're illiterate to Christianity and uh, uh, the, the Christian lingo and so on and so forth, I think it's the cutest thing probably that people come in their own hearts, in their own language, in their own way, without being holier than thou, and cry out to the Lord in simple prayer, in a simple heartfelt cry to the Lord, Lord, come and save me, come and help me because I need help, you know. And that's the only thing uh, I think that uh, God is listening for, that sincerity of heart and that heartfelt cry. But, you know, for me, I think that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's so great. God is faithful, Jew or Gentile, white or black. Purple with poke pink dots. We know that black lives matter. We know that white lives matter. We know that blue lives matter because the poor policemen, uh, they're taking a beating. They're taking a hit too. I, I was in Long's buying some notebooks and tablets and stuff. They had them on sale for back to school. And uh, there were three policemen in the store. Apparently, there might have been shoplifting or burglary or people running in and out with merchandise. and. I walked out, I walked past them, and I walked back in, and I just said, hey, thanks for your service, you know, I feel safe for you guys around, and I just walked out, you know, and uh, I, I think that it's an unappreciated business, and for many years, I didn't uh, have much to do with the police, and, uh, well, I did, but uh, <laughs> some wasn't too good, some was, oh, they're just like us, you know, <laughs> just as crooked as, I mean, you know. <laughs> But you know, the, the thing is, uh, you know, they, they're underappreciated. And you know, you think that these guys, they, they pulled the police back in certain areas of the, uh, in the, these big, large cities. And then the crime just went, went rampant, you know, and uh, things were going bad. And uh, we need a little bit of law because we're lawless people. In our own hearts, we want it our way and we're gonna do it our way. And you know, if I can't have it my way, I'm gonna make a big protest and we'll tear the city down. And you know, but you know, God, God is not a desire that any would perish. So whether you're Jew or Gentile, white, black, or like I always say purple with pink polka dots, color, creed, male or female, uh, with no regard to those uh, under the shelter who come under the shelter of his saving grace, hey, all are welcome. And he's calling all of us, hey, come. Come and uh, receive the grace. Come and receive the mercy. Come and receive the forgiveness and the, the life that is in Christ Jesus. He goes on in 22 to 24. He says, men of Israel, listen up to these words. Jesus the Nazarene, a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs which God performed through him in your midst, just as you yourselves know, this man delivered over by the predetermined plan and for knowledge of God, you nailed uh, to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. And God raised him again and putting an end to the agony of death since it was impossible for him to be held in its power. Peter shares uh, uh, of the crucifixion of Jesus and his resurrection, then going on to share a message uh, prepped by the word of God. You know, uh, again, it, it all comes down to the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. It all comes down to God raising him again, putting an end to the agony of death. Death was something that we, we didn't look forward to. You know, we always avoided it. And like some of you, you, may, you might have avoided uh, even going to funerals and uh, because the, 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 uh, the uh, just the stigma of being around. Hey, you didn't want to be around. And, uh, uh, but, you know, God ended that as he raised Jesus from the dead. And those who have Jesus in their heart would be resurrected to be with him in all eternity. Look down at verse 37. And when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the brethren, Brethren, what shall we do? And, you know, you, you, don't you love that? What must I do to be saved? You know, the, one of the jailers told the guys, and uh, this is exactly the same thing. Brethren, what must we do? And his answer we find here in 38, uh, uh, Peter said, repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. His answer is repent or turn, 
be baptized in the name of Jesus, receive the forgiveness of sins, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Paul says that the Holy Spirit was given to us as a pledge, a promise. Uh, we were sealed with the promised pledge of the Holy Spirit. And like a, like a seal, I know that in Japan, they don't sign on their legal documents. And they're trying to get away from it because they don't want to touch the seals or anything like that. They have these little seals that th their names are uh, printed on their, their seals and they take a little bit of ink and they, they mark the paper that they're, they're endorsing. And they said that because of this seal, it says, it's my signature, it's my, by my authority. And the seal that um, uh, you find on uh, various things uh, on containers, the containers are sealed. And uh, as, as the seal is broken, we find out what's in the containers, if it matches up with the manifest on the paperwork and the documentation. But the seal says that, hey, this is, this is ours, this is our mark. And uh, uh, as we are marked with the promised pledge of the Holy Spirit, we're marked by the Holy Spirit of God, guys. I think uh, what comes in uh, the book of Revelation where the beast says that hey, everybody's gonna receive this mark. And unlike the, the pledge of the Holy Spirit, the mark, the seal of the Holy Spirit, these guys that receive that mark, that number 666, will be sealed with this number that says that hey, you are forever separated from the love of God. Your chance has come and gone. And you know, I, I would say that uh, uh, we ought to pray harder and work harder that those around us might come to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and receive the promised pledge of the Spirit marking their lives as saying, this one is mine. Hey, this guy is mine. This guy by the name of Ram, he's mine. This guy by the name of Richard, he's mine. This one by the name of Hilda, this, she's mine, my child. And don't you see the mark on them, the mark of the Holy Spirit of God? We're sealed with the promise, the pledge of the Holy Spirit. 39, he goes on, <clears throat> for the promise is for you and your children and for all, for who all are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call himself to them. His answer again, the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. You know, he's saying that it's not only for the people of Jerusalem and Judea, but to the uttermost parts of the, the earth, even to the uttermost parts of uh, downtown Honolulu or the deepest, darkest uh, pit places in Waianae or Waimanalo or the North Shore. But we know we, God is reaching out far and wide to all mankind with desiring that none would perish but all come to everlasting life. He's reaching out into the Muslim world. He's reaching out into the, world, the great nation of China with its many millions and millions of people in India. He's reaching out to the, one of the uh, hard people of the world, I think the people of Japan, so far away from the Lord. I, I keep uh, thinking of the 2% Christian uh, in Japan, and the 2% uh, are uh, included in the 2% are the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, we've got uh, a lot of, uh, uh, God to ask, uh, ask God to, you know, pour out richly into that island nation of Japan. Uh, he says in 40, and with these words, he solemnly testified and kept exhorting them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Do you think our generation is pretty perverse, guys? We live in a generation filled with wickedness and violence and lying and stealing and cheating and perversity within the family. We sell our children, we sell our children into slavery. We send these young women and children uh, into lives of bondage. We send uh, uh, our old people, pretty soon we're gonna be sending them uh, uh, to the death camps and so on and so forth. We're not so far away from the things of Adolf Hitler and the things of uh, uh, ethnic cleansing, uh, as we've heard that term used uh, over the years. Uh, things are like that, and you know, one, uh, uh, they, they might come to the point where they say, oh, we gotta get rid of these Christians, and you know, once the Lord uh, raptures us, once the Lord catches us away, they're gonna be cheering and dancing because they say, oh, the bad vibes of these Christians are gone. 
and look at all that we have. We're going to reap all the benefits of all that they've left uh, behind. And, you know, we don't care because, hey, we're gone. That stuff that we leave behind is nothing. It's all going to burn. And I really realized, you know, years ago, Christians used to say, it's all going to burn, it's all going to burn. And I, I, it, it really comes uh, even closer a reality that really it all is going to burn as we get closer to the coming of the Lord. And we, we've always believed in the imminent return of the Lord. The Lord's coming could be at any time, men and women. And, you know, I, I encourage us that we would all live lives uh, that would... Uh, that would save us from this perverse generation, that we would all live lives that would speak, uh, that would be living testimonies known and read by all men, that we would all live lives, live lives that give glory to him and not bring uh, Jesus Christ a black eye. Oh, that guy, you know, We used, to, we used to surf, and we had the Christian surf club before called the Maranatha Surf Club years ago. And then I used to, you know, we used to take this, these little kids surfing and so on and so forth. And, you know, uh, they were good. You know, some of them were pretty good. And uh, uh, one guy paddled up to me and he said that, hey, that kid you bring, he didn't say he was a good surfer. He just said, hey, you got to peel him out. Like, hey, how come you Christians, you bringing these kids out and you bringing this kid out, he has a dirty mouth. He's saying, peel out mouth. And yeah, granted, he had a dirty mouth, but hey, God was working on his heart. The Lord was working on his heart. And, you know, we were trying to share with the young man. And, you know, I, I don't know what happened to him. He kind of drifted away after a while. He did. He turned pro. He was a good surfer. But, you know, he just drifted off into that oblivion of that pro surf circuit. But um, uh, again, we, 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 the call is, the cry is, be saved from this perverse generation. We who are here today, it's a reminder we live in a world that is opposed to the better part of the good news of Jesus Christ. We live in direct opposition uh, to what the world preaches. Life goes on. Hey, we make the best of it. It is what it is. You know, the, all, the, all the catchy phrases of the world. We're trying our best. Oh, hopefully we get lucky. Hopefully we get lucky. Oh, we had some good luck. They never say that, oh, God bless you. No, no, no. Oh, we got good luck. For many, there's no relationship with the Lord. He's a good luck charm. Oh, yeah, man, pray for me because I need all the luck I can get. I need all the help I can get. A good, yeah, he's a good teacher, but I never grew up that way, you know. And then you hear all these things and all the excuses, all the reasons, and um, you hope and pray and you hope the best. And, you know, I, I really believe uh, in prayer. I really believe that God is hearing our prayers. He's, he's, uh, he's answering his prayers. And a lot of times it just doesn't come uh, uh, fast enough for us. And it's a test of patience. And it's, it's a test of our mettle. Do we give up? Do we burn them? Do we, you know, tell them, go take a hike, whatever it might be. Sometimes we want to tell them. To. <laughs> you tell your friend, hey, go take a hike. Tell them, go take a hike. <laughs> and, and, and here it is, guys. Be safe from this perverse generation. I want to leave it right here. We're going to eventually get into First Peter, guys. And uh, Peter was a fascinating guy. But remember, he came from follow to faith to failure to being filled with the Holy Spirit. And I think that each one of us here this morning, we can identify with those words. And uh, uh, we want to be as filled with the Holy Spirit. We want to be saved from the perverse generation. We want to be as those uh, uh, being answering the people, hey, what should we do? Uh, uh, what should we uh, do to be saved? What can we do to be saved? And it starts with prayer. And uh, continue to pray, continue to push, petition the Lord, continue to live a life uh, that, shines his life, uh, that shines His light in all that darkness. Amen, guys? Amen. Father God, let's, uh, let's pray. Father God, we do want to thank you for this morning, Lord. We thank you for just the, the witness of your word, Lord. And we thank you for the witness of the lives of those that we've studied, Lord. We've looked at many lives in the Bible, Lord. We've looked at the life of Abraham and on, on our midweek and the life of Lot and 
Uh, we, we've looked at the life of Paul and Lord, a lot of these guys, Lord, and a uh, fascinating guy we skipped over in uh, the book of Acts is Philip. Uh, what a wonderful brother he was, Lord, and he is, and what a witness uh, his life is, Lord. And we thank you for the witness of your word, and we thank you for the wonderful work that you do in and through the, the lives of these men and women in the Bible, Lord. And we thank you. Lord God, that we can look at you, Lord, and look to you, Lord, and we can look uh, uh, that you're doing a work in and through our lives, Lord, and a wonderful work, Lord, because you are a wonderful God, Lord, and we thank you uh, for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for, again, the unconditional love that you have for us, Lord, and that you love us uh, just as we are, Lord, and uh, just where we're at, Lord, and you uh, continue to just encourage us along that we might follow after you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We praise you for the little bit of faith you gave us, Lord, that faith to say yes to you. It's not of ourselves, but it's all of you, Lord, uh, that our salvation comes uh, through the knowledge and through the receiving of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We pray that you would pour out your spirit in even greater abundance uh, into our hearts and lives that we might overflow unto our family members, Lord, unto our community, unto our neighbors, Lord, unto uh, our co-workers, Lord God, and that in that you might be breathing a life into many hearts and lives in these last days as people seek you, Lord, and seek you first in your kingdom, in your righteousness, trusting that you're adding all things unto them. Bless now we pray as we go. In Jesus' name, amen.
bless you and have a blessed weekend. Bless me. I love it. Where did you do it?